any given moment, teachers may be juggling their past academic experiences, educational training, influences from colleagues and administrators, district guidelines, available materials, state and federal legislation, the latest educational research, the changing needs of their current students. Is it any wonder why teaching styles are so diverse? Cortez notes a tendency to decontextualize explanations, to wrongly attribute a student's success or failure to a single cause, free from context. Some common assumptions are that minority students are genetically inferior, such and such group is lazy, or that they suffer a cultural deficit. In so-and-so's culture, it's okay to cheat. People may mistakenly assume minority students fail as a result of a cultural mismatch. So-and-so struggles in school because at home no one speaks English. In truth, each student exists inside a greater dynamic context. Numerous factors inside the school, in the family, the surrounding neighborhood, legal mandates, national attitudes, even individual developmental needs all play a part in students' experience. A positive change in a particular area can affect the entire system, but no single context-free cause can explain a student's success or failure. Step right up, step right up, hurry, hurry. See the amazing things of the new world inside this tent. You'll see Tina. Vygotsky developed a social theory of learning which includes the concept of the zone of proximal development. According to Vygotsky, in order for learning to occur, each learner has a particular zone within which they are ready to take the next learning step. When a student interacts with a responsive teacher or more capable peer while attempting to solve a problem inside their learning zone, they are primed for learning success. Based on this concept, it is important for teachers to formatively assess and adapt their teaching and activity strategies to ensure that their instruction and learning activities occur inside of their students' learning zones. Goodman and Goodman stress that the key to learning involves striking the right balance between personal invention and social convention. They liken these dynamic concepts to centripetal and centrifugal forces. If, on one hand, personal invention is left unchecked, for instance, if students are perpetually allowed to write however they choose, they risk producing work that no one can read. If, on the other hand, social convention runs amok, and say, for example, teachers chronically overcorrect grammar and spelling minutia, students may understandably choose not to write at all. According to Goodman and Goodman, the learning sweet spot, akin to Vygotsky's zone of proximal development, occurs when invention and convention are operating in functional and responsive tandem. Kasten describes different ways teachers can mediate learning through direct instruction, modeling, and by providing scaffolds such as contextual development, graphic organizers, and collaborative group activity. Fisher and Fry describe a four-step process, beginning with the teacher-modeled I do it stage, then moving to teacher and students cooperating in the we do it stage, followed by collaborative student group work for the phase of we do it together. These primary stages provide a solid foundation for independent student success, as demonstrated in the final stage of You Do It Alone, a hallmark of authentic learning. <laughs> <laughs>